what will Australian manufacturing look like in 2030? This question was explored at Manufacturing Skills Australia Symposium in April 2014 by leading industry experts. Current trends have some thinking that manufacturing is decreasing in importance. Uh, manufacturing is such a backbone of the economy in ways that people don't understand. Most services in the world that are high value added are either delivered by manufacturing firms on behalf of manufacturing firms or to manufacturing firms. So if you lose them, you lose the service. Manufacturing is actually integral to the life of any economy. If any economy wants to prosper into the future, we've got to have it. To ensure manufacturing thrives towards 2030 and beyond, we need to create a competitive landscape that encourages productive and innovative firms to flourish. This needs to start with a bipartisan, long-term commitment to manufacturing. We have to have continuity and industry policy that is agreed bipartisanly and it stays in place no matter what happens to government. And that means that companies know the rules of the game, they know the objective, they know the boundary condition, they can plan for them and it means they can invest in things. Whereas if we throw it around every third year, no company will do anything. The experts stressed that to maintain our current living standards, productivity levels must be significantly increased. The key issue is productivity. A country live on its ability to increase productivity faster than others. And that means that at the moment, the productivity improvements in Australia are not cumulatively sufficient to maintain the living standard that we presently have. Either we decrease our living standard or you increase the ability to create value. But if you're going to increase the ability to create value, you have to have the skills to do so and the industrial structure to do so. In Austria's context, we keep losing the value-adding battle. I think uh, Austria is going to make a decision at some point, you know, are we going to be serious about value-adding you know, uh, to some of our natural resources you know, or not? Developing world-class management and leadership capabilities are central to improving outcomes. Increasing managerial competence uh, increases productivity. Australia is a second-rate nation when it comes to managerial skills. And, and why is that? The opportunity to be exposed to good practice. You need to work in industries that are global and exposed to high competition. We really don't have any of those in Australia. So we have to really up our game on that level because the managerial skill is critical. The symposium explored how a design-led manufacturing mindset would encourage creativity and innovation in our workforce. So how do you actually enable creativity? and amongst your workforces to actually allow them to innovate. We're not good at getting the best out of our staff. And that's a huge barrier. We need to improve our capacity for turning research into value creation and competitive gain and deploying advanced technologies and processes. Australia comes out extremely high in all the supply side issues on research. There's a lot of research productivity on universities. We are extremely poor on research on company levels and there is a very poor linkage between what firms do and what universities do. If you look at the average manufacturing firm, uh, you should invest minimum 5% of your turnover in R&D, 5% annually in upgrading your capital equipment and minimally 5% a year in upgrading your people. The high value of innovative business models was also examined. If you only innovate around the product, it's actually a very easy thing to copy. But if you innovate around your business model, you will fundamentally change your product and service. If you innovate around your customer experience, you'll also fundamentally change your product and service. And those intangible or non-technological innovations are very hard to copy and actually make you very competitive. The symposium saw the need to nurture a modern, flexible and highly skilled workforce. The key questions then become, how can all players contribute to building up the adaptive capacity of firms and individuals to ensure that they have the best chance of capitalising on the new opportunities as soon as they emerge in manufacturing or elsewhere? STEM, 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 STEM. It is fundamental. Tomorrow's manufacturing, and even today's manufacturing, will require STEM skills in every single job. We need to have a higher level of education that has a major implication for today's workforce that needs to be upskilled about these things. There are many challenges, but also many opportunities for a healthy and vibrant manufacturing sector. A sweet spot of Australian manufacturing, it's high variability, high complexity, high value adding and profitable at low volumes. Those 
7% of Australian manufacturing companies that do exceedingly well, they tend to sit in that box. MSA's symposium demonstrated that the time is now to meet the challenges and seize the opportunities for Australia's future.